Hey guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. Today we'll be doing a short tutorial and it's the anatomy of the trachea. So we're basically going to talk about a little about the trachea, the bronchi, and the bronchioles. So these all form the tracheobronchial tree. And this is basically a system that allows air to pass through your lungs and this is where gas exchange occurs. So you know the trachea is located in the neck down to your thorax there and let's now jump into the anatomical position of the trachea so you can see right here the trachea marks the beginning of the tracheobronchial tree as i just said it arises from the lower border of the cricoid cartilage you can see that right there and it's basically in the neck and it's a continuation of your larynx so your trachea is a continuation of your larynx. So it travels down, 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 and it goes to your superior mediastinum, and then it will bifurcate. So when we say bifurcate, we mean it splits into two. So it splits into two right at this area, and this area where it splits into two is called the sternal angle. So where does your trachea bifurcate or splits into two? We call that the carina. So the trachea right here at the location where it splits is the carina. And this is at the level of T4 or the sternal angle of Louis. So another thing to note is that the trachea is anterior to your esophagus. So your esophagus is behind your trachea right okay we have that so far so as you know the trachea have cartilages or rings they're like c-shaped rings you can see here a lot of c-shaped rings and they're basically supported by the trachealis muscle so it's a trachea what muscle would support them the trachealis muscle and the trachea and the bronchi you can see down here they, the epithelium that lines them is basically slated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. So these goblet cells produce mucus. So basically you need all of this so the trachea can provide a sweeping motion of ciliaries, of the cilia, sorry, a sweeping motion of the cilia to attract and trap the inhaled particles and pathogen to move them out of the airway if you swallowed them. So if you swallow something, your trachea will help you to like, these little cells called cilia in your trachea, help you to just sweep them out of your trachea and you don't have them lodging into your lungs and so on. So here, as I said, the bifurcation here is the carina, and you can see it splits into two bronchi. So the first split here, we call this the primary bronchi. So right here where it splits is the primary bronchi. So an important point to note is that this is the most or one of the most sensitive area for the trachea for triggering cough reflex. So this is the area that is sensitive to triggering cough reflex. And what nerve supplies your trachea is a recurrent laryngeal nerve. And the artery or the blood supply of your trachea is the inferior thyroid artery. Inferior thyroid artery is from your subclavian artery. And the veins of your trachea, brachiocephalic, azygous, and accessory semi-azygous veins. So before I jump in anything, let me just review the entire trachea. Trachea, continuation below your cricoid cartilage, continuation of your larynx, composed of some rings or cartilage that are C-shaped. They split at this area called the carina, most sensitive area for your cough reflex split into primary bronchi. The trachea is supported by trachealis muscle and the epithelium in your trachea is pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. Blood supply of your trachea is recurrent laryngeal nerve, not 
blood supply. Nerve supply is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Blood supply, inferior thyroid artery of your subclavian artery. And venous drainage is zygous vein, accessory hemizygous hemi vein, and your brachiocephalus. Right, so now let's talk about the bronchi. So right here I said the trachea bifurcates at the carina at the sternal angle to produce the primary bronchi. So the primary bronchi then branch out to give secondary bronchi as you can see here. So each secondary bronchi it supplies a lobe of your lung. So you would expect that the right lung have three secondary bronchi and the left one has two because what? The right lung has three lobes and your left lung has only two lobes. So yeah. So the secondary bronchi are also called your lobar bronchi. And yes, the secondary bronchi supplies the different lobes of your lungs. So let's talk about the right main bronchi. So the right main bronchi is usually wider and shorter than the left and it also descends more vertically. So it basically goes straight down. This is of clinical significance because if something is trapped in your trachea and coming down, it's easier for it to go in your right lung as opposed to your left lung. Because it comes straight and it's more vertically down, it can quickly fall into it. So if there's any way that you heard that something stuck in the lung, it would be the right lung as opposed to the left. The, re the left lung is like more pushed outwards because of the heart on the left side. So any little damage or something trapped, think about the right lung because it's wider, it's shorter, and it descends more vertically. So, as I said, the primary bronchi branch into secondary or lobar bronchi, and these supply the different lobes of the lungs, and then the lobar or the secondary bronchi will bifurcate into segmental or tertiary bronchi. So, you know, primary, secondary, then tertiary. And the tertiary bronchi supplies a pul bronchopulmonary segment. So bronchopulmonary segments are basically subdivisions of the lung lobe and they act as a functional unit of the lung. So remember, primary bronchi, primary bronchi right here, bifurcate some more to give secondary bronchi, also called lobar bronchi, supply the different lobes of the lung and the secondary one further bifurcates into a tertiary one or a segmental one. We're going to move from the tertiary or the segmental bronchi. These further bifurcates into some things called bronchioles. So these basically are smaller airways and they do not have cartilage or mucus secreting goblet cells. So remember up here we said they have cartilage and some goblet cells that aid in trapping things and sweep them out of the trachea. The bronchiole that the tertiary one bifurcates in does not have these cartilage or goblet cells. Instead, they have some cells called club cells and they produce a surfactant lipoprotein and these basically prevent the walls of the airways from basically sticking together when we're exhaling. So remember, the bronchial don't have cartilage or goblet cells, they have club cells that produce surfactant that prevent our airways from sticking together. So then they're initially they are like many generation of the conducting bronchioles and these basically end as terminal bronchioles. So you're trying to finish this thing. So the conducting bronchioles, the club cells and the surfactant molecule, they end as terminal bronchioles. So these terminal bronchioles now branch out to form respiratory bronchioles. And these are different. You can like identify these different under a microscope because these have alveolized extending in their lumen. So the last one we want to get to is basically the alveoli. And the respiratory bronchioles have 
alveoli extending into your lumen. So what are alveoli? These are basically tiny air-filled pockets with thin walls and their epithelium is simple squamous epithelium. And this is basically the main site of gaseous exchange in the lung. So we have many different alveoli in our lung. And this is why we have good gaseous exchange. So I'm just going to run over the entire process starting from the carina for the division here. So from the division of your carina, I said we jumped to your primary bronchi. Then we go to your secondary bronchi, also called the lobar bronchi, which supplies a different lobe of the lung. From secondary, we know that the right has three lobe and the left has two lobe. The right is wider and short and more vertically down, so things can easily lodge into the right lung. Then from secondary, we jump to tertiary bronchi or the segmental bronchi that supplies bronchopulmonary segments of your lungs, which are basically functional segments of your lungs. From the tertiary bronchi or the segmental bronchi we go to our say it with me what do you think we go to we go to our bronchioles from our conducting bronchioles we'll go to our terminal bronchioles and an important thing to note is that the conducting or the bronchial contains club cell or surfactant cells and they lack mucus secreting cells from the terminal bronchioles, we go to our respiratory bronchioles, which have alveolides, which are the main gaseous exchange area. One last time, non-stop. Trachea, continuation of the larynx at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage, bifurcate at the sternal angle, called the carina, right here, bifurcate into primary bronchi, Primary bronchi bifurcates into secondary bronchi, which supplies lobes of the lungs. Secondary goes to tertiary bronchi, are called the segmental bronchi, supplied bronchopulmonary segment. The tertiary one goes to bronchioles, or conducting bronchioles, which has surfactants or club cells. From the conducting bronchiole, we go to the terminal bronchioles, and then from the terminal bronchioles, we go to our respiratory bronchiole, which have alveoli, which are basically the gaseous exchange unit. The alveoli have simple squamous epithelium, while the trachea itself and the bronchi here have pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So that's it for your anatomy of your trachea. Until next time, see you soon. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. And subscribe or follow our Instagram page at DN Medical Series on Instagram. Bye.